No question. I mean, that is going to be a very problematic and an already pretty combustible situation in the Middle East. Uh, yes, I imagine that uh, Netanyahu is quite pleased with this pick. And I think that this pick kind of uh, confirms many people's fear about what a Trump administration would bring for uh, hopes of peace in uh, that region and uh, for hopes that there might be a ceasefire. And those who were afraid that um, what we're seeing is part of a larger attempt to take the land um, that is already being disputed. So I, I imagine, you know, there are certain people who are very happy with that pick. I think that, um, I think, Carl, you kind of touched on this. When I think about just the day uh, and we look at the appointments or those who allegedly might be up for appointments, I think that he is making good on all of his promises. One thing about Donald Trump that I find very interesting, um, and Scott, you may disagree, which is fine. Uh, I don't necessarily know if acumen is top of mind <laughs> when picking these people. And what I mean by that is I believe, and then, and I have a random story, but very true, I believe he, he, he more so cares about what people look like and sound like. Enter our man who is a Fox News host who is now Secretary of Defense. Or I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, who, I don't, who, hold, one second. Yeah, I, I, one I, I second. think you're making a good and point. Then, and, and for him, and for him, it's most important for it to be showman, and it's also loyalty, and it's what you, what you need to say and you need to be on board. He's making good on all of his promises. I, I, I don't feel like anybody is saying what this is. I feel like we're in the twilight zone. I think which, this is bizarre. Which, which person doesn't have acumen? For his, for his mustache. Which, which person Fox. doesn't have acumen? I just, I don't believe that your Fox News host is going to be the person that you, just as, as we read a moment ago, someone does, said, does his, wow, this is the person. Does military record not mean anything to you? Does his bronze There stars? are many people with military records. Does two Harvard degrees? Let me tell you, I, I've done a lot of things. Do you want to put me in a, I, I've, I've been in a couple of school fights. I can do something too, if I, you want that to I, be the case. If, just, if you're you, saying you said he doesn't you, have acumen. I don't I'm believe just that he, he does. Has, he I don't believe resume. that anyone, and if you also look at Donald Trump, I also don't think that he has acumen, but what we have here today is the president of the United States that we have, what America gets what America deserves. Service. Let's look at the three okay. beneficiaries yes, of, of this vote. election as reflected in these appointments in part, and that is Putin, Netanyahu, uh, and, and, and the third, uh, third would, would really be... Is Xi Jinping in China? Pardon me? In China? Yeah, well, yeah. The, the, the Chinese. Uh, but the real thing is that these appointments are indicative of a new American position in the world that we no longer are. NATO is no longer the significant leader uh, in the world, that we're looking at a situation in Ukraine that has uh, fallen to, to the disadvantage of Ukraine as a result of this election with John, and what Donald Trump has said uh, about uh, it, but it's well, a kind of settlement that he wants. Can I defend Mike Huckabee for a second? Mike Huckabee has been to Israel a hundred plus times. The man knows the issues better than just about anyone. He was yeah. an ambassador. He had an amb ambassador's role in the previous Trump administration. He was governor of Arkansas. He is as legitimate as a person. The person losing sleep tonight is the Ayatollah. That's who should be losing sleep with Rubio and him and Stefanik. Those are our mission sets. And by the way, the war in Gaza. That happened under the Biden administration. We need a force posture that deters aggression. We had it in the previous Trump administration with zero new wars. There's two new wars. We can say, could you criticize Trump all we want, but he's anti hawk and he's the candidate of peace. So you can actually believe that Mike Huckabee knows more about that region than almost anybody else. I mean, there, there's, he, there's no way. He knows and, a great deal. And so but you said, but you said he knows more than know anyone else anything? because he visited Israel 100 times. And then we yes. just think about the language that's being used. This is not an occupied place. Mm -hmm. This isn't anybody's Judea land. and Samaria. It's right. Yeah. You know, I, I, he's, I don't he's, think you can actually He supports Israel. I mean, this, this, is a, this was a candidate who ran on a platform of, and has a record, by the way, of supporting Israel. And, by the way, has a record of brokering peace accords in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the Abraham Accords. But he's a pro-Israel candidate. He gets elected, and now he's putting a pro-Israel ambassador to go represent us to Israel. This, this should not be surprising to anyone. I, I guess mean, the, I, other, uh, the other part of this is that um, the, the U.S. policy is that settlements are illegal, that they are uh, an inhibition to a lasting peace in the region. Mike Huckabee is on record saying there's no such thing as settlements. Well, we've that said that we want to do wanna... whatever they want. I mean, I, I, I guess the, the, the real question is, I mean, if the, if the goal is 
it's fine. It's fine. There are a lot of people, most people who are in that ambassadorship are pro-Israel. But there's also a United States government posture that is about how do we get to an end to the conflict? And I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing Mike Huckabee getting there. Also, a two-state solution has, has been the objective of our government. Right. And, he has, and, and has Huckabee right there is that. saying there yeah. will never be well, a two-state solution. A lot solution. of Republicans don't believe in that. Exactly. And that, that is why I say, you know, one of the central losers. point that we need to focus on. This is not Donald Trump alone attacking our democracy. If he is successful, it is because Republicans in the House and Senate are complicit and they allow him to do this. Just like I do, they take an oath to the Constitution, not to Donald Trump. And they have to stand up for the Constitution against whomever is president, Donald Trump or otherwise. And if they're going to be Troy Nels and jump off a bridge because Donald Trump says that they need to jump off a bridge, then they are also violating their oath. You know, isn't that already clear? Like, don't we already know that? Yes, uh, it is very clear, which is why it should be very easy for every single Republican member of Congress to vote in favor of this resolution. But Donald Trump, as you point out, Chris, has joked, quote unquote, about many different things, including, as I remember, in 2018, he joked about pardoning himself, and then that became completely normalized, and everyone just expected him to pardon himself if he won this time. Um, the same thing has been happening. He has mentioned this over and over and over again for years now. And his jokes are not jokes. Nobody takes them as jokes. They are trial balloons. They are very intentionally designed to soften the response and then to normalize his unconstitutional and anti-democratic goals. And so this... Re so I appreciate Creepy McForehead is thinking that uh, if he becomes Attorney General, and this is a discussion which is currently going on within those, within the Trump orbit, I would say, to lower the age of consent to 15. Not sure how that's going to work out with some of the more evangelical supporters of the Republican Party, but Matt Gaetz clearly has problems. Never mind pouring oil on a fire. This is like nuking a fire. It is crazy. Within the Republican Party, there are people who probably publicly wouldn't say anything you can just tell it's not going to happen i don't even see like uh senator cupid's done ted cruz saying yes let's 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 have matt gates as attorney general it's not going to work and the dirt the truth let's not call it dirt dirt is gossip these are facts that are coming through the 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 investigation the house ethics committee's investigation they've already found out confirmed matt gates had a sexual relationship with with a minor. This is before he's got a position of power where basically he can do what he likes because he becomes the law. Now, I understand you have a very popular president at the moment who probably, in some people's minds, is above the law, he has a mandate, and he can do whatever he likes. But I am not convinced, I am just not convinced that um, an attorney general sleeping with somebody we will call a minor is going to be accepted by an awful lot of people. Is Trump just literally trying to firestorm the DOJ? In the comments section right now, I'm being really serious. What is your, and you do not need to be um, a Democrat supporter. I'd love to know if you voted for Trump, what do you think about Matt Gates becoming Attorney General and then attempting to lower the age of consent? Please, in the comments section. Thank you.